So, uh, you know, just starting off, man, like, again, faith is just so important because I believe that if you don't have faith, you really don't have a mission. You don't have a direction to go in, right? So let's break down what it means in the Bible. Faith, Hebrews 11 and 1, it basically says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, right? And the evidence of things unseen. So faith, by definition, is invisible. You can't see it. So the subject of this video is don't judge your results. Don't let your faith, excuse me, don't let your results override your faith, right? You got to think about it. So many people are starting businesses. So many people want to start businesses. So many people want to, you know, go for that big promotion. So many people want to want to, you know, make these big investments and do something that totally changes the whole trajectory of their family tree. You know, that's called breaking the cycle, breaking generational curses, right? It's never been done before. So as you go out and you get ready to do this, you're going to come against fear. You're going to come against anxiety. You're going to come against rejection, adversity, self-doubt, disbelief, you know, some dishonesty. You're going to come against some integrity issues because integrity, if you think about what integrity is, that is the building block that makes something solid. So if you come against the integrity of something, you're breaking out of that frame. You know, when you have integrity in a relationship and you are, uh, and you don't have integrity in a relationship that has a rigid frame, that has a social construct of what a relationship is, and you go outside of that relationship, now you violated the integrity of that relationship because that's, you went outside the frame. Uh, same way with the, with the airplane. Airplanes have integrity, right? You can't. You can't even let a, a pinhole penetrate the window of that airplane, or it's gonna cause this huge vacuum, everybody gonna fly out, all that, right? That's integrity. So if you go outside the structure of that airplane, you're gonna damage the integrity, it's not gonna work. Same thing with uh, generational curses. Whenever, they have a framework. Generational curses, is ha they have a framework, and when you get ready to break that curse, you're gonna damage the integrity of it a little bit, okay? But you can't be afraid. You can't say, I've never done it before. I no one in my family has been a millionaire. Nobody in my family's ever went to college. All the, all the relationships in my family end in divorce. All the kids in my family grow up and go to jail. All of that, you have to be the one to break those curses if they haven't been broken yet. But it's not going to feel good to do it because you're violating the integrity, right? So when I, when I say that, don't let your results override your faith is real important because remember faith is something you can't see we walk by faith and not by sight for a reason because if you walk by sight you're you're basing your life on what you see okay and if all you see is the same curse coming back to you you're not walking by faith no more all right you got to have a vision for the future you have to have a vision for your business fellas you need to have a vision for your family okay so I'm talking to my fellas on that one because, hey, we're the spiritual leaders of the household. And I'm putting it on y'all, man. I'm putting it on my fellas when, you know, things is going wrong in the household. When we got, you know, murder rates going up. When we got uh, high school dropout rates going up. When college enrollments is down. When businesses ain't being started. You know, when discipline is not being enacted in the family. I'm blaming it on the fellas because y'all are the spiritual leaders of the household. Y'all can't be putting all this on the wifey. You know, you guys start taking charge. What's going on, Miss Lee? <laughs> yeah, I'm just talking my stuff, man. Um, I'm about to give this card to this lady so we can pick up um, our two, two chillings. Hey, can How we are both you? of them, please? Both of them, yes. It's starting to cool down finally. I know. It feels so good. Have All right, weekend. you too. All right, so I'm putting on the fellas, right? Because it's on us. God gave us charge of the family for a reason. All right, and I'm not saying that women are bad or evil or anything, but women think with emotion a lot. And if you mix emotion with logic, you're gonna have a disconnect. And when you mix business with emotion, you're gonna have a disconnect. You gotta, business needs to be about business. It needs to be about facts. It needs to be about logic. It needs to be one plus one equals two. You know what I mean? 
So women have a, a phenomenal role in the family and they have a phenomenal role and very, very important role in this society. But my fellas, if you're not doing your job as head of the household, then we, as a, as a culture, we not going nowhere, okay? We cannot just leave it up to our women to, because they're spiritual creatures. Women walk by, by faith all the time, man. They're spiritual creatures. They're in tune with the spiritual world. And fellas, we're in tune with more of the physical world, more of the concrete world. Okay, and when you talk about money and finances and stuff like that, that's here in the concrete world. Okay, we let our women nurture us and raise us emotionally, and we let our fellas lead us financially and business savvy. Like, that don't mean a woman can't be a CEO because she still has the knowledge to know who she needs to appoint in the right place. She still has executive judgment decisions that she can make. That's true. Okay, more women are accountants for heaven's sake. You know what I mean? But when I'm talking about the family structure, I'm putting it on the fellas. Y'all got, we got to step it up. We all do. I still got things I need to do and step it up. But, you know, getting off on that tangent, we've got to walk by faith and not by sight. Meaning just because your results in your business ain't really where they want to be. That does not mean that you're a failure. That does not mean that your business is not going to skyrocket soon. Let me ask you a question. If you go and you plant an acorn seed in the ground. Do you see it growing immediately? After a year, do you see it sprouting up? It might take a few years for that seed to finally germinate, take root, and start growing into an entire forest. Some people just see the tree in the acorn. I see the whole forest in that acorn. I see the generations after that seed. So when you plant a seed in your business, do you expect it to immediately just start popping? Come on, man. Y'all got it. You got to be out your mind to expect a, a return that you can't put your business in the microwave and hit 30 seconds and expect it to come out like some popcorn. Y'all are quitting way too easy on yourselves. And I'm not even speaking to anybody individually because nobody in my business has quit uh, the business. You know what I mean? Or has has you know said that they can't do it anymore. So I'm not talking to you know somebody personally. It's just a message that's come to me to get it out to somebody because y'all somebody out there is about to birth something and they're gonna give up way too soon because they're not ready mentally. And so I'm I'm helping you get prepared spiritually and mentally. You gotta understand that business is also a spiritual thing. Like it's a spiritual thing. I explain that too. Because you have to rely on the unseen for it to prosper. You a, a good entrepreneur knows where the money is, right? That's a good entrepreneur. A great entrepreneur knows where the money's going to be, okay? A lion does not attack a gazelle based on where the gazelle is right now. A lion attacks a gazelle knowing where it's going to be after it jumps in the air. It jumps ahead of the gazelle so that when it meets it, boom, it can intersect right with it. The lion had to have faith because he can't see that the gazelle is going to be there because right now the gazelle is not there. The lion had to jump ahead in time to meet up with that gazelle right there so it can eat. And some of y'all ain't ready to eat. And y'all missing the plate every single time because y'all want to base things on what you see right now. It is not about the now. If it's happening now, it's too late to take advantage of it. You had to see it in the future. You had to see it with your mind. You had to see it with sight that is unseen. That's your belief level. Terrell says some people got magical seeds. <laughs> What's up, Mr. Simmons? How you doing, man? We miss your lives too, man. Uh, yeah, man. But that's all I wanted to say today, man. Don't base, don't let your your your, your faith get overridden by your results. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually having phenomenal results. I know sometimes people feel like, oh, you know, you might have got on here because you having some bad results and now you want to vent and get, nah, man, things is going great where I'm at, okay? Um, that's not, that's not at all where this is coming from. You know, again, I'm just reading the plan, you know, and, you know, coming up with some, some good content and things like that, man. It just came to me like business is so much spirit, so much a spiritual thing, but a lot of people they're using what they've seen. Because think about evidence in the courtroom, right? 
they recreate a whole entire crime scene based on evidence. Evidence is things that is unseen, remember? Proving the unseen. That's what evidence is. The Greek word for it is eglichos. Okay, that's what they translated in the Bible in that one part where it says that faith is the substance of things of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. Evidence is the word eglichos in Greek. And that basically just means proving the unseen. So when you re try to recreate a crime scene, okay, you didn't see the crime happen. You don't know what happened. It's unseen. But what we do is we recreate it using evidence. That's why they call it evidence, okay? So what you have to do is stop creating your business with things that are seen right now and start creating your business with faith that you can't see. What that also means is you need to create your success in a, in a frame of mindset that is unseen. That means you gotta be the person who you need to be in the future to actually be a multimillionaire to actually be that person that's driving a Ferrari or traveling the world, you know, you don't even know any other languages right now. How do you, you think you're traveling the world and you ain't even studying other languages or studying other cultures? You're not even preparing yourself to intersect with your future self right now. How are you going? How are you expect to be successful? You're not getting the personal growth and self development that a millionaire has to not only make the money but to keep the money. You're not getting the financial education that you need right now. So how do you expect to intersect with your future self at a sooner time? Say, I mean, it's going to happen for you eventually. Don't get me wrong. As long as you got a will to succeed, you're going to get there. But you can speed it up by applying faith to your business. So the result right now, instead of saying, man, I ain't never going to be able to travel, blah, blah, blah. That's based on the results you see right now. So work backwards with your faith. Work backwards with the evidence. Prove it now. Prove it now that you're traveling. I already got my passport. I already booked out, you know, future plane routes and where it's going to take me. Because I already seen, I'm seeing the evidence of my future self. My business is already doing numbers. I already talked to an accountant. Even though I ain't got $500 in my bank, I already linked up with an accountant that's going to help me. I already know a tax preparer in my city. Because guess what? Millionaires have accountants and, and CPAs and accountants. Millionaires, they dress a certain way. They act a certain way, right? So that's all I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Start. Don't worry about who you are right now. Worry about who you're going to be. Be that lion that's jumping in front of the gazelle and let's eat. All right. Appreciate that, Mr. T. Um, and of course, man, you know, we do have a business that you can actually just get a part of. All you do is you pay a small fee, a small fee. And all that does is pay for your website. If you were to start your own business, you're going to have to get a website. There's, you're not in business if you don't have a website. And that's really what your fee goes towards. And then uh, your fee also goes towards your own credit services. So you're basically buying the service and you're buying the website so you can offer this to other people. So not only are you fixing your own credit, but you now have a business where you can help other people do the same thing. And faith even goes in with credit. Like you're going to buy a house. You might not have the credit score that you need right now, but guess what? If you develop the credit score of the person that is buying a house right now, and you start that today, eventually you're going to be that person and you can't buy that house, but it works on the things that are unseen, not on the results of what you have right now. So I need more, more people to, to just tune into their own faith and say, you know what? There is a better life for me. There is a better person that I'm becoming and something like a better credit score and a business that can help me save more money uh, or make more money, uh, you know, save money on taxes have deductions like I'm in a car rider line but I'm making this about business so just driving to school picking my kids up is a tax deduction I'm becoming the person I need to be in the future to take advantage of a huge tax deduction if you're not in can't if you can't be in charge of like a thousand dollars you can't be in charge of ten thousand you can't be in charge of a million dollars that one penny that you say oh this one penny don't matter and you flick it out the window now you have a million dollars. That's the equivalent of flicking $10,000 out the window. 
So you got to be in charge of few and small things to be in charge of great things. And that's the last I'm going to say to y'all. We're going to go ahead and get this car ride line moving. Let's go ahead and get these kids. And, man, yo, link up with me. I got a great spot on the team for you. Help you start to earn that residual income. Help you start learning some passive income, some upfront income. You can even earn up to almost $1,000 in your first 30 days just by helping five people. So talk about a stretch of faith, right? <laughs> he said, all, all above, get to know Jesus. Amen. If you if you go back to the very beginning, I started out by quoting scriptures, my man. You know, that's, I believe that's a good book. That's a real good book, you know? And uh, appreciate y'all. I'm out of here. Tune in next week. We have some more topics. I might go live every day. I don't know. But just hit that, that hashtag, Car Chronicles. You're going to see me and Wifey giving y'all some cool things every day. Peace out. Love y'all. One.